All right. So in today's podcast, we have on Kyle Van Dever. I believe it's pronounced Van Dever, Van Dever. I'll have to confirm once we get him on here. Um, but I'm pretty excited because I've followed this guy for a long time. Um, he's a photographer, uh, an amazing photographer, uh, extremely talented in editing. Um, and he's super good behind the camera uh, when, you know, when it comes to filming and getting these creative shots uh, and just using his, I guess, his imagination and these these creative skills that he's obtained over the years of experience that he's accumulated behind a camera. And uh, he, he just puts out amazing content uh, no matter which avenue he pursues. Um, for us people, us folk in the fishing industry, you will know this guy if you watch Brandon Polinick's uh, YouTube channel or you follow Brandon Polinick on social media uh, if you don't follow Kyle directly. Kyle is the mastermind behind all that. He is the one getting all these shots, doing the editing, the filming. He is the whole brains and, and the creator of all this, you know, the, um, the cinematic uh, look behind a life of Brandon Polinick and his tournaments. Super excited to have Kyle on here. I can't wait to uh, get him on the line here on, on Skype and uh, can't wait to pick his brain about whole bunch of different stuff so i hope you guys are excited too and uh, let's get to it all right we are recording calvin never how we doing man good man how about yourself not as good as that stash dude i mean i've been i've like uh for the very first time i started using what is it the beard oil uh, uh the butter or whatever the beard butter yeah, or whatever. I've, never, I've never done that before so <laughs> i'm hoping it starts to like really really get some like character to it but my brother has like the little curls on the sides so so i've got something to, to shoot for at least i can see the curls i can see that working just okay. get real messy with it i like it so you staying safe and everything over there you yeah know, so yeah everything quarantined. it's pretty good the the last i think we're like on week two i think of the kind of stay at home in idaho uh and it's 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 not bad. It's definitely different. Everything's slowed down. Like uh, I kind of have a studio in kind of the downtown. It's a smaller town, but Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and we're it's like uh, it's weird seeing the streets so quiet. Like and and we're right on the lake, um, so like everything's all the bars, all the restaurants, um, pretty much everything downtown is closed. Like life is very slow. I feel like construction and really just construction is like the only thing that's really going right now. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's definitely, it's strange. How about yourself, man? We're, we're doing good. I mean, we're not in the, we're in New York, but we're not in the craziness of New York. So it's, you know, we, we, there's still that potential there, but we're, we're still being smart. Thankfully, New York's one of the states where, uh, you know, we're still, in, our waters are still in the, the low to mid 40s. So we don't have any party people going out and ruin it for us anglers. So <laughs> hopefully that doesn't happen. So yeah. we've been doing good. We can still fish. All the ramps are open. So yeah. that's it's always good. People are being smart for the most part. So it's, it's definitely good. crazy times, that's for sure. Oh, I, I've, I mean, I've never seen anything like it. I mean, I've just now started to really come to terms with it being a serious thing. I was in the state of denial. But, yeah. uh, you know, it, it is what it is. But uh, we're making the most of it. But before okay. we dive too much into the podcast, you know, if you want to explain to everybody, uh, listening and watching, you know, a little bit about yourself and then, you know, how you got into not only the film side of things, but how you got only into the fishing side and how that kind of combined to what you're doing now. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I started, I grew up in Idaho, so I've been fairly lucky to be in the outdoors, to be honest. But uh, yeah, growing up here, we had a lot of lakes, a lot of mountains. Uh, my family was really outdoorsy. We've always, I grew up in a hunting, fishing family. Um, but I really didn't embrace it really until like last two years. Uh, I grew up fishing just casually with my dad, uh, hunting pretty much every year, just like once for hunting camp, uh, kind of just kind of going along with it. I love it. I enjoy it, but it wasn't like a, something I really dove into. And then, um, kind of after college, I graduated and started kind of just, I graduated in marketing and didn't really do much with it other than I worked with corporate Toyota uh, or kind of like more so like I worked with a few dealerships and then uh, 
kind of from there started shooting weddings and for, for uh, video and kind of jumped out of the whole marketing world and just jumped out on a limb and did my own thing shooting shooting video uh, and, and luckily about two years in this is my second summer brandon uh paul nick hit me up and he asked me if i'd go on tour with him and film uh, his fishing and i had no clue about fishing or anything and he he uh, luckily kind of embraced it and it was cool kind of like seeing the outside world or being from the outside world of like the pro fishing or just like heavy into fishing and then seeing it that way and uh, so i had kind of a unique experience going into fishing seeing like this like total different world from what i had even the west coast uh compared to you know like west coast we're not like heavy into like bass fishing per se yeah uh, but we we like we have a lot of fly fishing but it's it's a totally different world on the east coast but i mean there's a ton of bass fishing here it's just not known to be like like being a professional fisherman in the west coast is like what you do what like, <laughs> the thing uh, but like uh filming for brandon was really cool and, and i've got plenty of stories we'll probably dive into later but uh, di- first first bit fishing with brandon i caught my first bass with brandon like my first year like maybe eight tournaments into and oh. He he pretty much like limited me to to spinning rod after our first outing because that's freaking <laughs> yeah bait casters weren't my friend for for quite some time that's for sure but yeah I got into fishing uh, through filming Brandon and uh, yeah it was a good time just just learning from it's it's unique to learn from a pro like see how a pro yeah. fishes um, so so I've been fairly fortunate there but after after this is this is I think my third year on tour with him and dude i'm obsessed i love bass fish i love fishing in general uh but i've i've really gotten uh addicted to going fishing i've I've been fishing you know a lot more with my dad now Uh, i'm really really glad i can do that uh a lot of fishing with brandon a lot of fishing just on my own beating down the bank uh but yeah i just i'm addicted now i'm i'm low-key addicted yeah you you essentially went zero to a hundred in the bass fishing realm Yes, (laughs) Yes, hundred <laughs> percent. Like it was, it went uh, from from not knowing anything at all to to totally be an outsider to seeing like the heavy duty bass fishing. It was really cool to to do that at least. So, so you explained how you got into fishing, and you said you started filming some weddings and stuff. But when did you first pick up a camera and kind of realize I I enjoy doing this? Oh man, I picked up. I bought my first camera my last year in college. I didn't really know. A whole lot about it other than the fact that I knew I wanted to take some photos and I'd, I'd had a GoPro beforehand and just really tried to shoot everything like everyday life like I'd go to hot springs or I'd go do something with my girlfriend or something and I'd film it uh, and I did it with a GoPro but then when I bought the camera I was like all right this is going to be a little bit more intense maybe I can like try to shoot a wedding or something because it was like crazy I like wiped out my bank account buying these camera and like it was just like it's it was like, kind of like a like a, yo dude it's it's insane especially like that point in college you're just like scraping pennies to get by oh <laughs> and it was just like one of those things I was like what am I doing but I figured I could maybe try to shoot some weddings to to like make back that money I lost on the camera and it kind of took off like after a while like I got really fortunate um and and kind of just through referrals like wedding films were kind of getting more and more popular and started to kind of make it somewhat of a living and then after that after i graduated i worked kind of uh probably two years but the last like six months i really went heavy in the wedding business and was able to give myself a runway and so i like just quit my job working with a toyota dealership and went for it so after that i was just like all all in on video and it's uh it's been good, but it's it's definitely crazy. That's for sure. It's de- oh, it's definitely a little more intense than I had imagined, but I uh, I've I've been fortunate and I enjoy that. I appreciate that at least. Yeah, I imagine your your schedule is very hectic. Not only because Brandon's schedule has to be hectic, but you are the guy who has to capture every single inch of it behind the camera, and you have so many variables to it. You know, like making sure certain things are charged. You're remembering certain lenses, certain cameras what camera works in certain shots, like what you want to do. I feel like that's just like a 12 lane highway with each lane going opposite directions and you're trying to keep them all, you know, streamlined. 
Like that just seems like madness to me, and it just hurts my brain to even start <laughs> to think about it. So yeah. what is it? What is it like? Like when you guys go for a trip, and you you know you want to plan a trip, and you want to make a video out of it. You know what is? How do you start to make like a plan? Do you just wing it? Like do you just bring some gear and wing it, or do you kind of have like a, a set plan in mind? Um. <sighs> Sometimes, sometimes I come into it with a little bit of a plan. A lot of times I kind of fly on the wall, kind of filming. I kind of just, I mean, there isn't a lot of planning that we do for a lot of the videos. Some, some of it, we have a little bit of an idea, but for the tournament videos, like it's pretty much anything can happen. So just document what happens. Uh, and that's kind of my goal. But like, as you said, like preparing, that's like always like the craziest thing. I liken it to like a fisherman, like, you know what I mean? Or an angler. Yeah. You, uh, you really need to make sure all, you know, you're, you've relied rods, like you've got everything set up, you're kind of dialed in. So like on that side of things, I'm like charging batteries. I'm making sure all my footage is like transferred to a hard drive. Like it's funny sometimes Brandon will be like basically rigging up his rods and I'm inside like transferring footage, charging batteries, making sure all my monitor batteries are charged, making sure like everything's like in the right place and getting everything charged. And it's funny because like usually in his camper and it's like I'm in the camper and he's right outside the boat and we're probably like 20 feet away doing our separate like professions. But like it's we've got it kind of dialed in now, but it's he, it's it's makes it a lot easier with Brandon, too, because he's he's pretty good with like uh, the on camera bits. It's like he's used to the camera being around him and stuff, uh, which it makes it nice. But yeah, it's it's kind of like planned chaos sometimes, I guess, if that makes sense. Like, yeah, have a gist of what we're doing, but we're kind of just winging it, too. So you just get as many shots as you can and just wait till you get to the computer. Exactly. That's kind of the 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 M.O. We have, we've had so far. Yeah. And I've, I've been a huge fan of of BP's page. And obviously, you're a huge contributor, a tr contributor to that page and but i have to say you know, in recent my favorite clip from that page and we've already i think i already messaged you about this was uh bp and a gentleman at the classic using hand signals to describe how they work a certain bait that was huge like that's like the epitome of fast fishing language yeah where yeah. you don't it's not even a language it's people understand what you're talking about yeah it's so I, cool i love there's there's uh, we have a series on YouTube called uh, Fishing it, Fishing is Our Language. And I've always thought that was the coolest thing because in 2018, we did a uh, kind of a series called Fishing is Our Language, but where Brandon, who was the reigning AOI, uh, fished with Japan's reigning AOI. Yeah. And it's really cool to see beside, like, there's few things that transcend like language and one of those is lucky enough to be fishing like you have food you have music fishing is one of those things because like you can really you can really tell who like you can you can communicate with anyone regardless of race ethnicity anything like language everything it transcends all that stuff because like you could see brandon communicate with that guy at the classic by just doing a simple hand signals or like, yeah. you know, just these little things. And, and you can, it, it really is cool to see people connect to, and they have this like passion for one thing, you know, and they just love it. And to see those people connect is special because like it, it and in a lot of ways it like gives you like this like warm, fuzzy feeling about humanity where we're like we, regardless of what difference we have, like, <laughs> any differences we have, we can come together. Like, you know what I mean? So it, yeah. I love those moments and like seeing that moment specifically was cool to see. And like, it was one of those things, like maybe it didn't fit in the video, but I was just like, it's one of those things that just makes you feel something. I was like, I've got it. Like it's, it has to go in there. Uh, oh, so yeah. I, I appreciate that you liked it, but it was a, it was a really genuine, cool moment. I think you probably got a lot of good feedback on that scene specifically. And that was pretty sweet. And I, I have a feeling you're probably going to get reached out by some organizations for people to use that. Because I could see that being, you know, used in so many different ways, especially to portray what fishing is. It's more like, you know, how they say it's more than just a sport, you yeah. know, it's because it, it really is. It can translate to fishing, too. It's more than just a sport. I mean, it's a huge community. It's pretty it's impressive. But, dude, you've done some incredible stuff. But I, I got to ask, 
who's driving the boat when you follow him around in tournaments? Oh, man. So a lot of times we're really lucky to have uh, kind of a community that is open to, to you know, being a camera road driver for four days. And I always joke with the drivers, we usually it's a rotation of whoever's in that area. We have kind of a little network now of people we've worked with. Uh, but a lot of times Brandon will reach out and say, hey, like I'm fishing this tournament. Is there anybody that wants to drive boat for us? Uh, the camera boat. And a lot of times it's, we have a kick on the boat. But it's funny, I always give the drivers uh, um, kind of rib them a little bit. But like it's hard to be on a lake for you know two to four days and not be able to fish. And you just see sometimes the, the camera boat guys. And I've, I've become friends with a lot of the guys. And they're really good people. And like just knowing them is funny is now is like, seeing them like watch fishing but not fish while like being on their boat like trolling motor and like not being able to like, cast out and stuff is just like torturous you know what i mean <laughs> uh so it's like one of those things you just see all these guys who are like they love fishing but they go out to watch fishing and it's like and fishing is really one of those sports like yeah you can watch it on tv but like it's the best part of fishing is like just going fishing you know what i mean like exactly. Exactly. so so that's the, the cool part there but like it's funny to always see these boat drivers, the boat drivers we have, and, and them always want to fish. But like, we're, like when we're on the boats and stuff, we're always having a good time and, and laughing and joking. And it's it's a fun experience. Like, honestly, I'm, I feel really fortunate to, to be able to meet these people, too. Oh, 100%. Yeah. And when you, so did you know, Brandon, before you got linked up to work for, like, essentially work from Phil Form? Yeah. Um, I, we actually went to high school. He was two years older than me. Uh, but we didn't, we, I mean, we hung, I want to say we hung out, but we were like, we were around, like I knew, I knew Brandon, like Same Brandon things. just through, through everything. We played kind of sports and stuff, but we never really hung out. Uh, and he was two years older than me. And I was like, I was kind of just nerdy in the first place, but, uh, <laughs> he, he, he always was like a good dude. And then when he asked me to come film with him, I was like, all right, sweet. This will be cool. Like. I've known him for a while, but never really like hung out with him. And you, you, at this point, like we've become like, yeah, I would say he's one of my best friends personally. Uh, he's a good dude, and and we have a good time together. That's for sure. Yeah, it seems very very genuine. You both yeah. do it. it. It was pretty sweet too. It's cool to watch the behind the scenes stuff with you guys. Like, I don't think I've oh, I I got a huge kick out of when you put his jersey on, you sat in the boat, and you pretend to do like the intro. Oh my god! I, I was that okay. Was it actually staged though, or did he actually come out and be like, "What are you doing?" Because he seemed very genuine with his his reaction to it. Yeah, we. Yeah, that was that was staged. But I'd kind of pitched him the idea like a joke, like, "Hey, that'd be funny, like a funny intro, like maybe something else for the videos and stuff." And he's like, "Yeah, let's do it." And like, so we kind of set it up and planned it. But like naturally we're that's kind of our humor and sometimes it's one of those things like we'll do something that's like r really stupid or just like it's funny to us but like tiff like tiff his his uh, girlfriend yeah. will kind of get us like you guys are i feel i feel sorry for her sometimes because she's kind of like she has to deal with us and we're like two like very immature humorous people like we like to like jab at each other and have fun and stuff and Tiff's kind of in the middle, like just like separating us. She's like mom, basically. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, she's she she deals with all her shenanigans. We have we have fun and uh, we joke around a lot. Like that's just part of who we are, I think. And and we have a good time with that. Yeah, yeah. It, it was I, I lost it when you're like when he was when Brandon was like, uh, and why do you have on my hook underwear or something <laughs> like that? I was like, that is so funny. <laughs> it was we, good. That that was a funny bit. He's a he is a good character on on camera like that. But like we just uh, like those things we just have fun with, man. Like just just that's our humor. We're we're kind of like that, I guess. Yeah, and you, you add that to like the the serious videos, you know, these tournament videos that are tend to be so serious. But then you like you'll slow it down a little bit and you'll do like his little singing or dancing while he's fishing, and then it's just small little humorous bits to it. It's just like it's cool to see the understanding of a cinematic, uh, I guess, the way you have it flow. You know, it's not serious 100% of the time. I think that's why people appreciate them so much is because it's like you're actually watching a movie. Like, yeah. it's, it's, it's awesome because it's high quality and it's actually, you know what you're doing. So it's, it's impressive. It's, it's, it's awesome stuff. And I'm sitting there, like, I'm putting, like, three hours in editing my videos that 
you know, barely anybody watches. And I'm sitting there, and I look at mine, and then I look at yours, and I'm like, dang. Mm-hmm. I am like, this is like a completely different page. And it's how long yeah. does it take you, would you say, on average, to, to, to edit one of his um, videos? It depends. I mean, honestly, to, to say like with your videos too, like it's one of those things, like you have to start somewhere. Like with any video, like like you got to put in work and it sucks and it's grueling hours. And like, I think video editing is one of those things you just have to be patient with and and understand like how you, how you progress in that video editing world is just through practice, like everything. Like if you want to learn to throw you know, if you want to throw any bait or want to throw anything to be like good at something, you have to put in a lot of hours, you know? So that's, that's one of my biggest things. Uh, but for some of the videos we film, they're usually like 25 to 30 minutes. Uh, we kind of try to do longer format videos for the tournaments. Uh, from filming, after filming, it probably would take me five five days if I worked fairly hard at it to to edit it and get it out um and that's going through usually like 300 to 400 gigabytes of footage uh and and yeah yeah it's it's grueling that's the hard part like going through footage is always like the worst part of just like rewatching everything you filmed it's just like it's, it's tough when it's that much film but if i was shooting like a shorter piece uh, or like a commercial or something like usually that time goes down a little bit uh, depending on on what it is I guess but yeah I mean it's it's honestly it's the grueling part is editing sitting in front of a computer when especially when it's a nice day out or something you want to go fishing or something it's tough yeah you gotta get the hammock out and try to see if you can do it in the yeah. hammock I've tried that and it's it's like it feels great but then it's such a struggle yeah, mm-hmm. it's, but it is what it is, but I, I'm curious. Did you did you film the the Jockamson's wedding? No, I didn't. Uh, they already had a girl who was filming it. She's really good. She did a great job. Uh, but I went out the day of that morning, and Carl was fishing with a bunch of his cousins and and uh, groomsmen, and then his grandpa, his grandfather, came with him from all from Australia. And that was a cool, like, it was just cool to see, like, it's one of those things, they went out fishing and, like, had just this blast of a morning, and Brandon was actually the camera boat driver for me on that, but uh, it was just a cool experience to see Carl, and he's such a genuine dude, and his family is all the same way, so it was really cool to see, um, but yeah, I didn't film the wedding, but had a, had a great time and filmed them all fishing together, which was a blast, too. It looked like a blast. Uh, the, that video that they made was, was pretty awesome. They're they're a rowdy group, that's for sure. The Australians, man. <laughs> yeah, with keep... that, that one scene was I guess his whole family, and they were all yeah. I can't remember what they were yelling, but it it was just it, it was it was it was funny, and it just kind of like it was like a testament almost to that video showing how tight knit that group was. Oh okay. yeah, yeah. You should you should have, they uh there was a ton of his family flew into our little hometown in Coeur d'Alene, and yeah. that weekend it was like an Australian infusion of our town and they were like all the bars and everything knew this like Aussie group that came in like it was just like it was a blast it, I mean they're they're a fun group man like Carl and his all his family are really really good people that's hilarious man <laughs> so I gotta ask you though if you could give a pro and a con to the filming what, what would you say that would be um a pro of the filming of Brandon, the fishing videos, or let's say yeah, let's say just uh, the the filming aspect of all of his say the tournaments and stuff like that. A pro would be that I get to use a lot of pros equipment. Like I get to use Brandon's baits, rods, reels. Like I get to use all his alpha angler rods, which are super nice. Like his dial reels. It's always like it's always like. A very I'm very lucky to have that and also get like advice and learning from Brandon while he's fishing like I yeah. watch a lot of him fishing just in general uh, which has helped me fish uh, but a con is uh, on the same side of things is like when he's I've become to the point where it's like when he's fishing and I have to film it's like it's gotten so much more difficult to like film rather than fish you know what I mean like so I like think that's like, yeah. The, yeah, we've always joked like, like he's, he's basically ruined a cameraman now. Cause like outside of 
before this, I I was so easy just to film the fishing because it was just I was just fil- filming fishing, do the fishing, and it's like whatever. But now I'm like, whenever I'm on a boat, I want to fish instead of film. So it's like putting down the camera is like I'm like ah. But it's uh there there is a lot of pros. I would say the pros definitely outweigh the cons for sure. Oh, 100 percent. What was it like? Your uh. Because I can't imagine you were in a bass boat before you met a brand or you went on and filmed with Brandon. <laughs> yeah, I'd never been I'd never been in a bass boat prior to filming with him. And uh, my first tournament I went on, I was pretty amazed. I was I was kind of like it was one of those things like I was so unprepared. It wasn't even funny. We were fishing. It was Alabama, Martin, uh, Lake Martin. And it was like early it was like february and i was like oh i'm going to alabama it's gonna be warm like showed up and it's like cold like cold cold like abnormally cold for alabama that time of year and brandon like saw that he's like what do you have like the morning over and i was like i have like a sweatshirt and like some pants and he's like you're gonna want long johns you're gonna want it's gonna be cold you're gonna be going like 60 65 70 like i was like what i was like and he's like yeah it's gonna be like you have you ever ridden in a bass boat i was like not i've ridden in boats like i figured it's the same thing he's like no nah, man like you're gonna get cold like and so like the first day i just remember like going out like i i was always like why did they have handles in the boat like and like why was there handles there and so like we're going and like the boat kind of starts walking a little bit and i just remember i had my camera in my lap and i had a had a monopod next to me and it, I, everything just started kind of like going all over the place. And I was trying to wrangle all of my gear. <laughs> so like that was kind of my abrupt like lesson into into like bass boats and, and like how intense it can be. And it was it was one of those things like I've definitely grown on that now. But it's it was definitely a shock, I would say, at the least. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, well, the first time in a bass boat is always uh, interesting for people and trying to <laughs> just see the reaction to it. You know, it's it's but it's one of those things though, like how fun it is, but also pretty scary. You know? Yeah. Especially, I mean, you're I mean, you're going obviously going very fast, like if you're top speed in one, but they are not like the. I mean, if you're in rough water, you're gonna you're going to feel it too. Like, oh, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. Your you, tailbone's going to be sore for a while. And like, you'll be fine. Like there's t- times when I'm just like, I'm like fearful a little bit. Like, but, uh, it's, I've been lucky to have a lot of really good drivers that I've been with. I usually, um, uh, Brandon does a good job of kind of vetting the guys and making sure and that the boat obviously is safe and they're safe. Uh, and, and always having a life jacket and everything. So, but it's definitely, it's definitely one of those things like you, it's weird. I've ridden in a lot of like different types of boats now. And now I've like prefer a specific, like I, there's boats that I know how they're going to ride it. And I'm like, Oh sweet. This will be nice. But other times it's like, Oh God, here we go. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I know, like, I know this is going to be tough. Like, (laughs) that's funny. It's definitely his preferred transportation now. Yeah. (laughs) But it's, it's, uh, they're definitely, definitely a trip. Bass boats are, that's for sure. Oh, I bet. Yeah. So traveling with Brandon now, is there a location that kind of stands out more to you? Like you get more excited for than others? Oh man. Um, obviously, I mean, it's hard. It changes seasonally, obviously. And it's starting to kind of follow the fish for me now because yeah. I get to fish like after tournaments too now. Uh, but I would say probably my favorite is upstate New York, like St. Lawrence river. Uh, one, because Brandon typically does fairly well there, and I think upstate New York is some of the most gorgeous country in our country, uh, and, and the fishing isn't too bad. But I would say, and, and typically, like, a, a summer day upstate New York is hard to beat, I would say. That would, that would probably be the top of my list right now. Upstate New York is, uh, you know, the, not, I'm not going to say everybody, because I think it's gotten a lot better, but I think there's this... There's this notion when you think of New York, you just you tend to think of a city right off the bat. Yeah. But New York's got some of the greatest outdoors, and people just don't realize it. Like the multitude of lakes and the hunting that we have, it's just we're, we're spoiled up here. If it weren't for the taxes, it'd be the greatest place to live in in on the, the nation. It's yeah, because it has everything, absolutely everything, and it's nice because there's not like 
a million things trying to kill you all over the place, you know? I mean, yeah. sure, we have bears, but that's it. That's all we got. You know, we, <laughs> bears and some, we have some idiot people, but, you know, for the most part, I haven't been scared for my life walking through the woods at five in the morning. So it's, 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 it's a nice place. But, uh, I would say I was very surprised on how uh, my perception versus the reality of New York when I when I first been when I work, first went to uh, New York was very different. I thought I was going to be city, and it was like it reminded me of home. Like I felt like more at home than Idaho, anywhere else in the world than upstate uh, New York. Like it it feels exactly like home to me, and it's it's super strange because I thought it was just going to be cities and like traffic and craziness and everything and like. And I was just very like I felt at home. It was gorgeous. It was calm. It was like so different, stark from everything I'd imagined. So I uh, I definitely definitely want to uh, spend some time in the Adirondacks and upstate New York this this summer for sure. That's awesome. Yeah. So on the flip side, is there a location where you're like, ah, crap, uh, it's this tournament? Man, I I don't know. I, I would say one of the most uncomfortable tournaments I've or places I've been to was the Sabine River and in in June so it was like just hot and like it was the it was incredibly hot and the fishing wasn't great Brandon did pretty good and that was one of my favorite videos of Brandon's uh, but it was like a hundred plus degrees no wind and like obviously working with like electronics or anything is and cameras is like you're overheating all the time and yeah. it was one of the things where i like had to keep changing batteries and like basically keeping my camera cool enough to keep foaming because like we roll pretty much the entire time during the tournament um but yeah the, the sabine river was was pretty miserable if i had to choose one but but i did i do enjoy it but it's like a supper fest like it's a pure supper fest you're gonna be really hot there's like there was no wind but Sabine River is probably tops of the list in most most unfavorable places. <laughs> that's that's surprising that that's what that's what Florida, right? Sabine River is Florida. No, it's te- just outside of Houston, Texas. Oh, it's in Texas. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, oh, what am I thinking of? I'm thinking St. John's. Oh, that's St. John's. Yeah. St. John's is, is Florida. Okay. Yeah. That's Sabine. another one. Yeah. <laughs> another hot one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do so you have any uh, any crazy travel stories? Anything you want to share? Oh, man. Um, what are some? I don't know if I can speak on all of them right now. <laughs> so, uh, there's been some pretty interesting. I'll just put it this way. Uh, in 2018, I was fortunate enough to to be able to go over to Japan with Brandon. Uh, and we filmed what I said earlier, the... the uh, bigger than us like fishing is our language series on his youtube channel and it was uh before the fishing we met up with another angler yuski and um, and he was kind of our liaison basically while we we're there but the first night we met up with him we went out to uh just outside of tokyo yokohama i believe and or it might have been in tokyo he took us out to some bars and some crazy places and like we saw some like insane and japan is like amazing but their like nightlife is insane like it it was another level i can't even go into it but i ended up singing uh karaoke with brandon and our whole group at a a special place a bar (laughs) uh but we sang uh friends in low places like a God, yeah. yeah, of course. Like, Garth Brooks, Brooks, man, Brooks. He doesn't know that song. Garth Brooks song, and me and Brandon always joke about it. Now is like we sing a Garth Brooks "Friends in Low Places" song in Japan, and like I was always, we always joked about it. Like the day after, we're like, "Did you ever picture us like ten years later in Japan singing Friends in Low Places, like on a fishing trip with, when we were in high school?" Like I would have never. If someone would have came up to me and told me like. Hey, you and Brandon are gonna be singing "Friends in Low Places" in in Japan ten years from now. I'd be like, dude, get out of here! You're crazy. Like, what are you? What, what's going on? But it was it was an interesting experience, uh, just in general. But yeah, I'd say that's probably one of the craziest fishing travel stories I've had for sure. That's awesome. So my question on that is, were people in the bar singing along? Did they know the words? They. So yes, I would say. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was it was a mixed bag of of under people understanding what's going on, but like the Japanese culture is so like stoked on like karaoke in general. You could go in, you could be the worst singer in the world and go into one of these karaoke bars or karaoke areas and like they'll do it at restaurants. Like it's it's intense. Like it's really cool. But like you could sing any song and they'll be so excited for you to sing it. Like it's it's honestly one of the coolest like it's it's really cool just to have like you almost have like your own personal concert and everybody's super stoked regardless of what you're doing like it's i would recommend if you're ever in japan you have to do a karaoke bar uh even if you're like the worst singer in the world you, there'll be people like supporting you that's unreal <laughs> that's our, incredible our rendition was not a was not a very good rendition not but very good rendition. <laughs> have you seen uh, a bunch of the, the these music stars doing like live concerts now on like their social yeah. medias yeah garth, I think it's brooks, like, garth brooks just did one the yeah other night. They had like a tv special or something didn't they something like that yeah, yeah. like it but it's, it's it's really interesting like going back to kind of like the kind of quarantine we're in uh, is seeing how people adapt to it. You know what I mean? Like people going live. I've seen like tons of people going live. Like we don't really have any sports to watch. Like a lot of like life has changed in such a weird way that you'd never imagine. Uh, yeah. But like seeing people go live and, and seeing is really cool. Uh, just seeing that the, the whole way we communicate change and like what we watch is really, really interesting. That's, that's for sure. Oh, dude, I saw a... Um... It was an article. So I didn't. I didn't actually tune into it live. But there's these two pro soccer teams, obviously that couldn't play each other. So their their social media pages stream live together and had their two, uh, one player from each of their soccer teams play each other with their teams on FIFA, and that's how they determined who won. <laughs> that's awesome. That, that was hilarious. That was <laughs> awesome. I, I think they killed it too. I think people loved it. So that's yeah. how they wanted. To, that's how like I think they're trying to determine this next season. Like, during, like, a mock season of just on FIFA. Dude, I think, like, honestly, like, virtual, like, eSports and stuff, like, dude, I think NASCAR has done, like, a couple races, like, two of the races, and they'll have the guys, like, actually race. Like, they have these, like, intense virtual, like, setups, and they'll race, race virtually, and, like, you can tune in to watch them race, and it's really unique, and it's, I think it's interesting to see how, our like esports world like it, i don't know if you're a gamer or anything but like you'll see people watch like these like virtual like game games happen but it's like you'll see a basket i know nba is doing like a basketball like tournament like 2k uh it's it's interesting to see how like we've kind of like turned turned into like this like world that's watching virtual sports now because like you, you see how much like the world loves sports like that is kind yeah. of a mean thing yeah. for people and and fishing being one of those and now we don't have that so we're like tuning into like these virtual matches and it's just funny to see i think twitch is the uh, twitch and those online streaming services have never hit an all-time high until now and like yeah. if it's so, like the people like uh you know I, I used to watch a bunch uh back when you know fortnite was a thing like i got, I got into it i'll admit yeah uh, and like uh there was a guy tim the Tatman. i'm not sure if you're familiar with him at all He's like this big Fortnite guy, but he's out of Syracuse, New York, so that's why I watched him. And like those guys right now are killing it. Oh yeah. Just because they can stay at home, they don't have to go anywhere. Yeah. They can walk down to walk to their office or game or whatever it be and just play. And then there's even more people at home and that uh, aren't at work and can now watch. Yeah. So it's, it's like they're kill that's that's the thing to be in right now. Yeah, no, hundred percent. The the esports world is definitely probably He's seeing a bit of a boost in in their uh, their growth and and everything. It's it's interesting to see, but I think there's a certain sense like we we all appreciate like the I can't wait to watch like like sport. I can't wait to go fishing. Like you know what I mean. I can't wait to like you know what I mean. Like it's interesting to yeah. see the things you're kind of like missing. Like I I can't wait to watch like basketball or you know what I mean. Like the, it's a weird yeah. weird. And I'm not a huge basketball fan, but like watching sports has always been kind of like. A coping thing for people and i think i saw like drew Brees said something today is like it, america united states needs like sports to it's it's kind of like it's something we all kind of like it like Unite. we, it's, it's, we it unites us like there's few things in this world like you could you could have like stark uh political opinions or or you know every difference whatever you want to say but like 
if you like the same team, if you like the same angler, if you like the same, like, you know what I mean? Like sport, yeah. like you have this yeah. connection. And, and it's one of those things I, I think like in times like this, especially you, it's, it's, it's something we need to feel unified and, and connected in as, as sports, fishing or like food, uh, you know what I mean? Music, those things really like transform who we are as humans. And it's really it's something at this point, like where we need to heal through that, I think. Yeah. Yeah. The world does not go round without our drunk football fans pouring beer on each other. <laughs> it's it's weird to think that's how it works, but it's true. <laughs> like, there's one thing that helps like the United <laughs> States fan at least is is drunk football fans cheering. Like that's how you stress. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's their mechanism. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Uh, so, a quick, a curious question I have for you, and not to go too into on it, but you know, obviously you're traveling a lot out of the year with Brandon, uh, and obviously he has, you know, Tiff with him and everything. He's got his family essentially there. You know, is it tough for you then with t- try to have like a home life? And I mean, you said you have a girlfriend and seeing family and that that sort of deal. Yeah, I mean, honestly, on tour. I'm really lucky. Brennan and Tiff are, are really awesome to me. Uh, we live in the RV basically. We're on the, they live in it full time pretty much. They uh, are in the RV pretty much, I would say, eight months out of the year, seven months out of the year. Uh, and it's really accommodating for everything. Like you kind of like you feel at home. It's not like going from hotel to hotel. Uh, you have your special spot where you can put your toothbrush. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to worry about that stuff. So I'm super lucky about that. Uh, I do miss being home in the summer because where we're at is an amazing place the fishing's great uh we have a lot of smallmouth. uh it's just a great outdoorsy place so i miss being home during the summers uh but i'm lucky to to honestly be gracious or brennan to have to be gracious enough to like treat me so well yeah yeah to let you know you have your own life yeah, yeah. Exactly. i think there's a lot of supervisors and bosses and that kind of don't take that into yeah. view you yeah know, but that's awesome. So before we kind of we, we wrap up here, I have a little question segment I do at the end. But before, before we get into it, is there any advice you have for people? Because I think there's a lot of uh, there's is a growing industry. I don't, I don't want to say it's huge, but there is a realization to people who are into photography and filming that, you know, with these big anglers that have these channels, these media outlets that they can't do by themselves. There's opportunity there. You know, and for people interested in that, you know, what advice do you have? Honestly, yeah, I think the industry is kind of growing. It's weird to say it's even an industry. I, the fishing industry is a very big industry, but like I think fi- filming the fishing side of things is growing so much. And I, I would say my advice to anyone that is trying to get in that field is to honestly just shoot as much as you can. Like if you are going out fishing by yourself and all you have is a GoPro, um, use the GoPro. Like, you know what I mean? Like you don't need fancy stuff. Like I, I think it's huge. Um, if you can go film it with your cell phone, if you don't have a GoPro film with your cell phone, like I think like one of those things is not to get caught up in the gear side of things, like what camera you have, what stuff you need to have, what you edit on, what you like so much of it is just practice. And like with everything like fishing, football, basketball, um, any musical instrument, just practice. If you put in a thousand hours, you will master it, you know, but like putting in a thousand hours doing any of those things is never fun because you got to start somewhere and it's, you're not going to be like, you're not going to be the pro that you want to be at the start. You have to, it's, it's, it's honestly, it's about just being very, it's putting everything in perspective and being humble about things and knowing you're not going to be great from the start, but being willing to put in the work and like understand your first video is going to probably not be great. Like, but (laughs) the next video is going to be a little bit better. And, and you're going to learn things and like just being adapting, being adaptable to situations and, and understanding when you have an opportunity thrown at you. You film 20 videos and you put them up on your YouTube channel, of just you fishing or like a friend fishing or, you know, your brother or sister fishing. And then you you luckily, you know, a pro angler sees your videos or sees something in, or not even a pro angler, but a, somebody in the industry sees your videos and like, hey, can you create a video for us? uh we would love it and then you're like oh wow okay like sweet and they're like how much do you want you're like oh you have to you're gonna pay me too like because you're so yeah. stoked about like actually just doing it for somebody else um and, and not worry about like the little things just go out and have fun with it create something that you truly enjoy uh, 
and just and just be humble about it. Never never be never be too good to take any job. Yeah, I think anybody who's cocky, there's one thing to know that uh, you know, there's always somebody out there that's better than you, no matter what. There's always somebody better than you. <laughs> and even in that sense, like I think there's a lot of times, like there's a lot of people that film in the industry now that I've become friends with, and it's like one of those things. I see their videos, and it's inspirational. Like it's not like I'm like competing necessarily with them. It's just I see someone, and I'm like, dude, that's an awesome video, or like, hey, like I really loved what you did there. And then I see it in my head. I'm like, all right, how do I want to try to like not necessarily one up it, but kind of like raise the bar a little bit to like how can I how can I like competitively and constructively compete with someone else where it's not like tearing each other down. You know what I mean? Like I love more yeah. people in history. Like I would love to like I would love to like take people on and like help help them grow. But then you know what I mean? Like I would love to yeah. like grow that industry of people like media in in the fishing world because i feel like it's like still a little bit behind and I, there's a huge there's a huge opportunity for like younger kids to get into the industry and start you know what i mean like yeah. it's such a new media type that people are are really kind of starting to understand you're essentially what you're trying to say is like two kids on a basketball team playing one on one during practice but if yep. you're better you're bettering each other and yep. then you're taking what you learn and using it yourself. Yep, 100%. Yeah, it's awesome. Cool. Well, yeah. before we get into these last two questions I have for you, uh, for people watching, listening, you know, where can they find you on social media and follow along with your adventures? Um, you can find me on Instagram, pretty much everything under Kyle Vandiver. Uh, and and that's pretty much yeah i would say that's pretty much the best place to find me on instagram or uh, i'm on tiktok now uh okay. youtube i have my own personal page uh but yeah you can you can find me on there and i'd love if if anybody has a question or anything honestly feel free to reach out and uh, I'd, I'd be happy to help and everything will be linked down below in the description for people to go check it out follow along and reach out to you if they need be and you know if, especially for people anything you know from filming to you know whatever have you i'm sure you're down to talk whenever so they can give you a shout but uh these last two questions i ask everybody on the who comes on the podcast are you prepared i'm i'm i think i'm prepared at least <laughs> okay the first question uh if you could invite any three people to have dinner to pick their brain who would you invite and why and they can be past or present and does not have to be fishing industry. Okay. Um, if I could pick three people, that's always a tough question. I need to like think of this ahead of time. Um, one, I would pick Martin Luther King Jr. Okay. Uh, just because I think that is a, uh, I've always, one, I think he's a great speaker. Uh, but two, I think he just would be very insightful. Um, uh, Two would be, oh man, I would love to invite my grandpa. My grandpa passed away a couple years ago, uh, and just because I'd love to hang out with my grandpa again. Love that. Uh, and then three, man, who could I invite? I'm a huge sports fan, so okay. I would love to invite uh, Emmett Smith. I'm a huge Cowboys fan. I would like to hang out with him. Oh, Actually, no. no. I should have known from the Cowboys thing on your TV right there. I should have oh, known you're a Cowboys fan. Oh, man. You know I'm a Cowboys fan. No, I, w I would definitely like to hang out with Emmett Smith. Uh, he's always been, like, one of those guys that, like, you know, you, like, look up to as, like, a kid. But, uh, yeah, that was – I would say Emmett Smith would probably be one of those guys. Uh, I might have to trash you in my feature post now. I'm Dude. a Eagles fan. Oh my god! <laughs> hey, we can maybe. Well, maybe I. I would say I've watched more Eagles games where they beat the Cowboys. So I'll. I'll give you that. I can like, as long as like I can. Yeah, yeah I have too many Eagle heartbreak stories now. <laughs> it's all right, dude. I have a weird team, so I. I really only watch. I watch basketball when it's on, but I really only watch football and hockey, and hockey's a big one for me growing up, and uh, it's weird because, so, I'm an Eagles fan because my dad was a bandwagon through his whole life and liked so many different teams, and I decided oh. I wasn't going to be that way, 
So when I would, I grew up, he was an Eagles fan, so I decided I like the Eagles. And then when I was like five or six years old, I played against Mario Lemieux's kid, and Mario Lemieux was coaching. I didn't realize it till you know, after it, and it wasn't five or six, I was like seven or eight years old. But I went yeah. to go shake his hand, I woke up, and I'm like, oh, you're Mario Lemieux. <laughs> like, I didn't realize it the whole game. And then, like, he talked to us afterwards. It was pretty cool. So I was like, yep, I'm a fan. So I'm a Pittsburgh Penguins fan and a Philadelphia Eagles oh, fan. Oh, man. Makes for awkward games when people bring up other sports. So I was going to say, that's a, that's a pretty stark difference there. Yep, and when people I'm at like Pittsburgh games and people talk about the Eagles, I'm just like turning away. I'm like just not talking about it. Just <laughs> it's just gonna come out. It's like don't talk to me. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I I'll have to I'll have to shoot you some messages when the Cowboys are uh, are playing the Eagles two times a year. There we go. We'll have to we'll have to, we'll do the Skype and we'll have to have a watch party. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right, man. So the last question, super simple. Um, favorite memory while filming with Brandon? Oh, man. Um, favorite memory while filming with Brandon? Oh, man. There's a lot. I would say one of my favorite, and it goes back to one of my least favorite places we fished, is the Sabine River. He uh, had a pretty big final or er, third day he went from i think he was like he barely made the 47 i think he was like 47th out of 50 he made the cut on day two and he had to have a monster day to make it into day day three or four yeah day four to fish on championship day and he had a really good day and he came in and he still was like i don't think we're gonna make it i know we did good but like we had a lot of ground to make up and he needed like i can't remember exactly what he needed and he was one of the last guys to weigh in and he weighed in with exactly the amount of weight that he needed to to make it and it was like he was looking at in, in the videos if, if people watch on the videos is like you'll see him look at the video it's sabine river and he'll look and he'll see like the reading and he looks over here to check the other like score like he can see it on the on the stage and he'll see like he gets exactly what he needed to make it by like the ounce and you could, just his celebration is really cool, and just being there was like one of a. It was it was a really cool moment, and I know it's probably just seems really vague there, but if you watch the video, you'll see it. Uh, but yeah, I would say that's one of my most favorite and memorable moments of of his tournaments, at least. There's there's a ton of memories outside of the tournaments that are fun, uh, but yeah, we we uh, I would say that was probably top. That's awesome. That's pretty. So I have to go back in and uh check for that moment just to to replay it over but that's pretty awesome dude yeah. on the dot you don't see that very often that's, yeah. that's pretty cool it is pretty cool but yep that's uh that's the top one awesome well dude i gotta say thank you for taking the time out of your day and uh you know hopping on here and talking to me and educating everybody about some film and what's a day in the life of uh being uh, a <laughs> videographer and cameraman for uh mr polonic so i appreciate you dude i appreciate you having me on i, I really really do and uh excited uh for everything to come and if anybody has a question don't hesitate to ask i'd love to help uh yeah i just want to i want to say thank you i appreciate appreciate you for having me on of course yeah we'll, we'll be talking to you soon hopefully we can uh this this disease virus thing goes away that's you know, putting a damper on everything, and you know the guys can get back to the fishing. You can get back to filming, and uh, hopefully, yeah. in that case, we'll have you out at the end of the season, just getting a whole uh, a recap of what happened for the 2020. Would love to, man. Yeah, definitely a little normal. Normal C sounds good right now. Yeah, right. So, <laughs> all right, man. Will you stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Appreciate, it, man. Take it easy. Take care. So I hope you guys enjoyed that episode there with Kyle. It was a blast to talk to him about how he got into filming, how he kind of grew up in the outdoors but really didn't get into fishing that much until he met Brandon. And uh, him and uh, Brandon Polinick have been traveling for, they said, the past three years, some, something like that, uh, filming for him. If you guys watch Brandon Polinick's YouTube channel, which is linked down below, you'll, you'll see all the work that Kyle's done. And he's, he's a mastermind, like I told you guys, behind his channel. Um, so go give him a follow if you're into to filming, photography, editing, any of the such. You know, reach out to him, ask him some questions. He's a great dude. He'll be more than willing to uh, to help you out. 
Uh, so go follow his pages, keep up with his adventures, go follow uh, or subscribe to that YouTube channel. And if you aren't already, subscribe to the Ibra Outdoors YouTube channel. Um, if you don't want to watch this podcast on YouTube, you can follow us, uh, follow along on the podcast at Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Anchor app, the Angler app, pretty much any podcast application out there you can find us. Thank you guys again for watching and for listening, and we will see you next time.